Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Breakdown, where we're going to be getting into all of the delicious publication details around The Poppy War by Rebecca Kwong, a recent trilogy for the fantasy genre, and one that was quite foundational in the founding of this booktube channel. Now, if you've been watching these breakdown videos for a while, you know I try and adapt and change each one to match the specific series I am talking about. The amount and kind of information available for, like, Tolkien's Middle Earth and The Poppy War is substantially different, and so I change each video's format to focus on where I have the most ample information for each series. With it being such a recent release, we can't exactly talk a whole lot about adaptations or influence, and I also don't feel as comfortable getting into a living author's personal life as I did with Tolkien because the internet's weird, and I try to avoid giving too much personal information out about the life of people who are still having to live. But all right, without any further ado, let us go ahead and dive into The Poppy War. Now, yes, this is a trilogy that's first book shares a name with the series, and that first book is titled, of course, The Poppy War. And it is inspired by real-world historical trauma and the brutal eras of history that resulted in countless millions of deaths due to things like war, starvation, natural disasters, and just the general sh of mankind, I think that's safe to say. And I want to get this out of the way at the beginning here. I would certainly not call The Poppy War a happy read. I'm introducing a new tonal scale for this series that goes from a 1, at Berserk, the darkest you can be, to a 10, the most lighthearted fun read. Think Discworld. So we'll call it the Berserk to Discworld scale, for convenience sake. And on that scale, I'd give it a 2.5, much closer to the tone of Berserk than something like Legends and Lattes. Events within this series involve everything from heavy drug use to graphic beatings and mass genocide. But the story itself focuses on a protagonist named Ren. Ren's childhood is terrible, and their life gets worse from there. From her abused life, Ren gets accepted into Syngard Academy, an academy that's actually inspired by real-world examples where students apply and take tests, and depending on what their score is, pretty much the rest of their life can have a massive amount of dictation based off of how they did on this one test, and that, that is just terrifying to me. Worst thing I had to worry about growing up was the SATs, which is similar, but not nearly as bad. From there, without getting into spoilers, we watch Rin go on an arc that Rebecca Kwong has set herself, and I don't believe is spoilers because it's all over the marketing material for the series, that is inspired heavily by the real-life person, Mao Zedong. And on a personal note, reading this book made me go and research all kinds of historical events that my own personal public Southern education here in America never bothered to teach me about that are incredibly important events within world history, and that's one of my favorite angles to reading fantasy inspired by all kinds of different cultures. It can really motivate you as a reader to want to figure out what an author was inspired by, and that is really core to the foundations of what the Poppy War is, something that is taking real-world historical events and kind of changing them enough, but they are clearly recognizable what they're inspired from to tell a fantastical story. Now, the real-life author herself, Rebecca Kwong, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Georgetown University. Shout out 202 for going on to pursue additional education at the University of Cambridge and the University of Oxford before graduating in 2019, publishing The Poppy War at 22. Notably, Kwong also is a graduate of the Odyssey Writing Workshop and attended the CSSF novel writing workshop in 2017. The Poppy War, book one, was released May 1st of 2018 by Harper Voyager, who did publish both of the sequels. Its official subgenre is grim dark slash high fantasy, with all three of the original ink style covers being done by Young Chang, who you may know from a lot of their fantastic work involved in the Avatar franchise. I did not know this was the same artist, but now that I know that, it's so obvious and their work is great. Since its release, The Poppy War has been translated into 13 languages and won several notable awards, including the Compton Crook Award in 2019 and the Crawford Award also in 2019, as well as being nominated for a Nebula Award in 2018 and a finalist for a Locus Award, which I hope I'm pronouncing right this time. Dyslexia. It's a And of course, it won a Stabby, which I did too, for a much less impressive category. 
<laughs> we also have countless glowing reviews like these you're seeing on screen now, but we are still a bit too close to the Poppy Wars release to have a full gauge on its overall influence on the fantasy genre as a whole. But let's get into the numbers, why you're here. As always, these numbers, you can find a lot of conflicting information online, but I have found what I believe to be the most accurate assessment. Though, you need to keep in mind that versions change frequently, and so page count, that's got the biggest asterisk. But for the initial release, I was able to find that the first issue of the Poppy War had 531 pages, a little over 159,000 words, with an audiobook that was 19 hours and 27 minutes. This was followed up the next year by its sequel, The Dragon Republic. Still following the journey of Rin, The Dragon Republic also displayed how quickly Rebecca Kwong was able to grow and adapt as an author, a trend that has been consistent, at least in my reviews, throughout her career. Each book has elements of her writing that are clearly improved over previous entries, which, starting as high as she did, in terms of overall review, that is quite impressive, and is something that is personally inspirational to me. Always be honing your craft. And a little bit of additional insight, the first Poppy War book was also kind of foundational in me changing my approach to review here early on in the channel. While I very much so enjoyed the book, I felt pressure in some ways to be like, well, there was more negative angles and this and that if you have this taste, and I let that affect my overall review. It wasn't until after I put out my first Poppy War review that I went back and reread the book that I went, mm, no, I didn't really feel that way, and I want to give reviews from my own personal subjective taste, and it's up to the audience to learn my taste and go from there, rather than trying to give some opinion that I felt like the most right opinion. So there's definitely criticisms to be had, as there is for every book, but I maintain the Poppy War, it kicks ass. Now, The Dragon Republic, the second book in the series, does take this world to even darker depths, in my opinion, than the first book, The Poppy War. Exploring real-world inspired themes like colonization, and the more you read about Chinese history, the more these inspirations just become very apparent in the text, but in a good overt way. It's at this point that I also feel it's safe to categorize the Poppy War as military fantasy, as well as just high grimdark. But let's go ahead and get into those numbers. The second book is a bit longer, with, for its initial publication, 658 pages and 187,835 words, an audiobook of 23 hours and 46 minutes. And there's something pretty incredible about the third audiobook that I had to verify like three times. We'll get into that, though. Speaking of the third book, the Burning God was released November 17th of 2020, solidifying that every book within the Poppy War has above a 4 rating on Goodreads, nice, and is my personal favorite of the three books after having gone back and reread the series in recent years. Though it's important to know, I'm partial to conclusions, Crippled God, Best Malice in Book, Fight Me. But from what I was able to find, The Burning God had less pages but more words. Layout, with 640 pages but 188,619 words. But fascinatingly to me, the audiobook for the third third Poppy War book is the exact same length as the second one, I verified this on Audible, coming in at 23 hours and 46 minutes. That it's just a fun coincidence. After digging into it and verifying some things, depending on which page I was looking at, sometimes it says 46 minutes and sometimes 47. So they are literally close enough that a rounding error will tell you the difference. I just like numbers, please don't judge me. But that brings us into our final statistics, where you will see that the Poppy War is roughly composed of 1,829 pages, well over half a million words, and the audiobook runtime is just about 67 hours. Though I know a lot of you go ahead and do like that 1.5x speed? Do you not appreciate the performance? Speaking of, the audiobook narrator is Emily Zeller, who you might know from their work in Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us Part Two. Now, if you made it this far into the series, I'm going to assume you either have read and are a fan of the Poppy War, or at least interested in picking it up. So here's my final pitch. The Poppy War delivers a truly human corruption arc, like few series are able to commit to. Even outside the fascinating real-world inspirations for this series, the Poppy War is able to overcome its few flaws that are there and get better better as the series goes on. And this is an author who it's just very easy to be a fan of as well, as Rebecca Kwong has continued on from this series and published the very well-received Babel, or The Necessity of Violence, an arcane history of the Oxford Translator's Revolution, which I also reviewed her on the channel and highly recommend, as well as having an upcoming title released, Yellowface, which unfortunately is not categorized as a fantasy book, so it can't exactly be reviewed here on my fantasy channel. But that's it. With this being a recent release, I'm very excited to continue to watch 
how this series gets talked about and the conversation around it involves with time. But let me know what you thought of the Poppy War in the comments down below and what series you'd like to see covered here in the breakdown next. I know I promised Realm of the Elderlings soon, but I put out a poll and this one won before I remembered I promised Realm of the Elderlings next. So next, we will be getting Robin Hobbs Epic. So like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here and have a good one, y'all. Peace.